Hey YouTube, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Kirsten DeMello, and today I have a very special guest with me, our dear friend, Hadolfo de Oliveira, all the way from Oregon State. Hadolfo, thank you so much for being with us here on my YouTube channel. Thanks, Kirsten. I wanted to introduce you and give a little bit of a background to allow our viewers to know a little bit more about you. Aside mm -hmm. from the fact that obviously you're now residing in Oregon, can you give us a little bit of a background on who you are professionally and how you came to find yourself in Oregon State, here in the States? Yeah, so I was born in Brazil. Uh, grew up in Brazil. Uh, in Brazil, I studied in Brazil um, until I finished my bachelor's there as a chemical engineer. Uh, when I started working professionally as a chemical engineer, uh, that was about when I met my, my wife and we had a long distance relationship for three years. Uh, after that, she imported me and that's how I ended up in Oregon. Uh, here in Oregon, I, I got my MBA uh, in global operations and I, I work currently uh, as a, basically with this, this background of uh, engineering with uh, a business degree. Awesome. Well, I came across or came to know of you through the Oregon Spirit Society that you started. and I came across actually one of the articles <clears throat> that you wrote, which I found very fascinating and hoping to sort of talk a little bit, have you talk a little bit more about this particular article, which I know I posted on my Facebook page. I will also link it down below for those of you who are interested in reading more about it. The article was entitled, Awakening for a Future Society. I love the ideas, especially the way that you ended it, because basically it was a call for us to go deeper within ourselves to do some inner reform. But what led you to write that article and to really, what led you to your own spiritual journey, your spiritual path? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think what led me to this spiritual path is kind of my, my nature. Uh, I would say, you know, we, we can't have certainties about what exactly <clears throat> we're doing on earth, but for me, I find it uh, really um, a, a deep connection with spirituality from the beginnings, right? So, and that, and that, I mean, has there were times when when that was not the, the primary focus of my life. I think when you're going through engineering school, uh, that those were, <laughs> at least in my case, one of the moments. Uh, there were periods of that that you know. Uh, I was not as connected or as uh, uh, focused on that as I am uh, Today. now, or right. But uh, but I it's part of my nature, is what I mean. And uh, and then in Oregon for a while, I I kind of studied things on my own. Uh, there wasn't anything here that really uh, fulfilled my my need for spirituality uh, because I am a strong advocate of uh, rational spirituality a rational kind of spirituality and and I found that in spiritism in Brazil right uh, in fact I was fascinated the first thing that fascinated me about spiritism was that it was a lot similar to my own ideas right so, so that's how I, I found myself within it. Although I still continue to think about myself as a free thinker. Um, now, those articles are basically a way uh, that I find to, to, to explore their spirituality and share it with others. There was a point in my life here that, you know, just, do, just studying on my own wasn't good enough. I needed to connect with others. And that's when uh, I started the Oregon Spiritual Society. Uh, that's a center, and we have a group of people that uh, gather to study spiritism. Uh, although we we explore pretty much any any anything um, about spirituality, uh, but it needs to be in light of reason. Uh, and spiritism offered us this this safe place where things can be seen from a um, from that perspective of a rational spirituality, uh, so we are not falling into 
dogmatism, um, right. you know, mysticism, basically exploring the the ideas that are uh, too fictitious and not based on any kind of, not grounded, let's put it that way. Okay. I, I noticed that in your article, you actually referenced uh, a, a lot of um, old thinkers, Karl Marx, Rousseau, Kant, but you also mentioned a, a great Swiss philosopher. You mentioned Piaget, who did a great uh, amount of work for children's psychology and, and theory. Was there something about um, these some, some of the great minds? I don't necessarily think that, I think, right. I, I don't want to um, bash Karl Marx. I think everyone has something to bring <laughs> to the table. There's always something positive we can find in all people, even if something's small. However, how does that also play a part in your, your spiritual walk? Do you find that you are gaining a lot of knowledge from, from different areas, from different theorists, from different walks of life, from different belief systems? And are you bringing that together with your belief in spiritism? How does it all come into play? Because I noticed that your article is very rich in bringing in different texts or bringing in different um, people from different walks of life that aren't necessarily from the spiritist or spiritualist background. So how does that play a part in, in your thinking in this article? And yeah, overall, so really. as, as I mentioned, uh, I try to maintain myself as a free thinker. And uh, there's no advantage in only reading, uh, for example, spiritist books, right? Or just seeing things from a simple, uh, a single perspective. Uh, that's how you fall into dogmatism, right? That's so. Um, let me. One thing I wanted to make sure that I mention here is that I'm not endorsing any philosophy or uh, any thinker in particular. Uh, I think the point I wanted to make when I mentioned all of those were just to demonstrate that they cause a significant impact uh, in, in in the world with their ideas. Mm -hmm. Now, no moral judgment <clears throat> whether you know the ideas that were good or bad. They brought progress or not. Mm -hmm. The fact is, there was an impact, mm -hmm. right? And and we can think about those ideas. Uh, and, and if in general, I think you know, let's put it this way. I think what this is a little bit of what we are missing in the world today. You know, the world has been polarized, and one side cannot talk to the other uh, in the realm of ideas without making enemies, right? And we can disagree in the realm of uh, ideas, although we still have respect and, and, and care for each other. I think yeah. we need more of that. And Definitely. we need more independence on the thinking so that we can, can see things from, from our own perspectives and, and, and judge things and, and share the best. Um, what, we, what we know from the history of, uh, of uh, spirituality, religion, uh, even science, is that truth will prevail. Uh, you know, uh, some of the uh, fictitious uh, uh, science fiction, let's call it that way, some of the science fiction of uh, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, it is now a reality. And some of the science of a hundred years ago, <laughs> now are complete absurds, right? Yeah. Uh, we have the same thing in spirituality. That's very true. How do you feel all that plays a part in what you kind of referenced or referred to at the end of your article, not to want to jump right there to the end? Mm -hmm. um, I really recommend people to go and read the article. It's very thought provoking. And I think it's good for us to really sort of allow ourselves to meander through your article and allow the thoughts to come as they as they do as you, as you read because it really forces people to read a little bit more because it's thought provoking but you kind of reference in a way this idea of inner reform which is right. I, what i'm assuming what you mean by that is exactly what it says is that going in with within ourselves to be more 
self-aware, conscientious. Some would even say to have this Christ-like consciousness. Um, I know that mindfulness meditation is, is pretty big right now. And that just helps us, I think, to center ourselves and to be more in touch with ourselves. So could you touch a little bit on this idea of inner reform? Because I think ultimately, at the end of the article, what I got from it is that it all boils down to, and correct me if I'm wrong, right. but it all boils down to us working on ourselves. And that seems independent of any religious background or any religious affiliation or spiritual affiliation, because anyone can really do the, their own work on themselves, right? Right, right. Yeah, so, um, uh, in, op in opposition of what Karl Marx that you mentioned, uh, defended, <coughs> I believe that we can only transform the world through uh, inner transformation. You cannot transform the world from an external perspective. You can change the rules around it and, and expect that we will change internally because of those rules, right? And in fact, that external transformation are only, only indicating uh, a disbelief that, that we are good inside. Right. You only need to uh, control uh, how we share resources if you don't believe in the natural solidarity of people. Mm. Uh, so, uh, I, but again, I respect anyone that thinks differently than me. Don't, don't make myself an enemy. Uh, mm. But the need for inner reform comes from this, from, from identifying what within myself uh, and this is something that everyone should do, as I see, uh, needs to be changed, needs to be reformed, recycled, right? What is it that is the old uh, that I no, no longer want to, to attach to? And what is it to, that I need to uh, renew? New ideas. Mm. New, and that's the importance of reading from all perspectives because that brings fresh ideas. That questions your ideas. If you only read um, the same ideas, you'd never read anything, or if you only hear the same line of thought, you never hear uh, or study the ideas, the concepts, the paradigms that could question those that you maintain. So there's no growth there. So when we, when we open up for all kinds of inputs, we can recycle our own ideas. And that's what I call inner reform. It's an exercise of thinking about morally, about what, what is your internal content? How are you behaving? What are you bringing to the world? Uh, how are you cooperating? Uh, how are you loving yourself and cooperating for the growth of others? All right, so that's, that's what I call inner reform. Um, now, if you allow me, um, another point I wanted to make here uh, is about the inner reform for spiritualists. The first point is, if you're a spiritualist, then you believe that you are a spirit, right? That you are not just a physical being uh, uh, with your consciousness that resides in the physical brain, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that that brings a lot of things into perspective because immediately it becomes very relevant to think, what am I here for, right? right. What right. is my agenda, right? If I'm alive and in a physical form, then there must be a purpose for all of that. Um, yes. I don't really want to get into the future, uh, where I'm going after. Let's just think about present right now. And what I would like to do is invite the listeners to uh, we are going to do a little bit of an inner uh, an exercise of inner uh, reform and inner exploration. So okay. I invite the listeners to uh, think about resolutions. Think about three to five things that you want to bring to your life right now. If you already have your resolution list, then pause this video and go pick <laughs> it up. If you don't have, then pause this video write three to five things that you want to bring into your life now, then come back, okay? So, assuming that you paused and now you're back, uh, let's go through your list. It's an exercise for you to do, not for us here, right? Uh, but let's think critically about the things that you want to bring to your life. And again, 
these exercises for spiritualists. So we expect that you believe that you're a spirit, right? Uh, with a spiritual perspective, right? So what is the benefit or utility of what you have in your list? Why, why do you have it there? What are the inner factors? Uh, what aspects of yourself make you want what you want, right? Uh, do you find yourself um, through what you have there a little more um, self-centered than you thought? Um, do you see s shades of selfishness? Do you see altruism? Do you see humbleness? Do you see arrogance? Do you see pride? Do you see materialism, right? What what do you have there will tell a little bit about your character, will tell you a little bit about what you carry within. Uh, and again, there's no problem in, in wanting material things, but you should ask yourself, uh, what's the benefit or utility of what you have in your life, or is it just to fulfill your vain um, need for superfluous things that just just feed your ego, right? So mm -hmm. that's a little bit of an exercise for each one of us to do. Um, but as you're doing that exercise, you'll find the answers for those questions that we asked before. Who am I? Right? What I'm here for? You, it's, it's subtle, but you'll find yourself in, in moral aspects. You answer the question, who are you? And what are you here for? Well, maybe you'll find a couple of things that you're actually surprised about yourself and you actually want to change. So maybe your actual list should not be to fulfill certain, certain things that you had there, but to actually uh, work on the moral aspects, right, uh, of, of what you had there. So this is an exercise that I've done myself and what I ended up with is, is is a life plan, yeah. a life plan of I like what that. I want to accomplish in this life, which, which kind of led me to think about, you know, which profession I want to have, what I want to study, what I want to dedicate my time. Uh, basically, it created the, the focus of my entire life, and every year-to-year -year resolution is kind of a... a, a a side plan from that main, main plan that is for the life and is in full alignment with my spiritual reality. So this exercise is for spiritualists because of this. Uh, are you living your life and, and your desires and shaping everything around you from a materialistic standpoint, even though you might not see yourself as a materialist person, but you're giving up to all of those you know, uh, uh, superfluous needs that, that they are definitely not spiritual? Or are you living the life of a spirit, understanding that you have a physical reality now and you have um, a lot, you, you must live this life, you know, if you're here, it is for a reason, you shouldn't be concerned so mu too much about what's happening in, in the, let's call it the other side. But, but are you, how does that plan, uh, how does your plan, life plan fits into your spiritual reality? What are you going to take from here? That's what I wanted to share. I love what you just said. And I think that it makes so much logical sense that before we even begin to work on inner reform is kind of like, okay, well, inner, inner reform, it seems like starts with step one. Well, if I'm supposed to be reforming myself, I first have to find out who I am. <laughs> and right. it makes sense because when we're talking about, you know, if, we, if we're working on a product and we want that product to be perfected or we want to advance that product or whatever, we have to first know all about that product. And then after that, then we can begin to tweak it, work out the kinks, work and see what software updates we need to do with ourselves or whatnot. So it makes sense that it's like, so what I'm gathering you're saying is step one, know thyself. You have to know who you are, what you're working with. Right. 
right? So what what exactly, how what would that look like if someone wanted to take this knowledge in a practical sense? So what would be your recommendation for someone that's starting out? And I like to ask my, my guests these types of questions to see, you know, what is your experience or what is your recommendation if someone's just starting out on this new spiritual journey or if they've been on this journey for a long time and they just want to see if what other people are doing. So what right. is your recommendation? Is it start journaling, uh, do, meditate, pray? Mm. What, what would you say to that? No, my recommendation is the same that Jesus used. Uh, it is by the fruit that we judge the tree. So uh, what, are, what are your accomplishments, your relationships? What is the reality uh, that you live in an everyday life? Uh, cool. Who you are in everyday life tells you who you really are. And uh, one thing I wanted to, you know, I, I, I usually see the, your, your spiritual perspective as the impact that you have on in your surroundings. Uh, in, your, in your family, in your community. If you're not bringing any change, you should be really concerned about it. Uh, maybe you have less value, uh, and I'm please understand what I mean by value, uh, than you, what you think. Okay. I, I tend to see who I am and who everyone is by their actions, uh, what they support, what they accomplish, right? Uh, and in, in fact, I would, I would like more people to do that with things like politics, right? Instead of listening to the debate at that point in time, what is the history of that person? What has that person done, right? What is, what is the curricula, right? When we are judged for a job, someone would take a, a piece of paper to begin with that talks about your entire life and what you accomplished. Why we don't do that with politicians, right? Just a side thought here. Uh, but, you know, think about what you're doing in your life. How is your relationship with your wife or husband or partner? Uh, what is your relationship with your parents? What is your relationship with friends, with your community, at work? What is the impact that you cause to society? All of those things are telling you who you are. Uh, and, and if you don't like the answers that you get, there's probably things for you to work on, right? Uh, how much love do you bring to those relationships? How much are those centered into what you want and how things need to be from your perspective, right? How much are you imposing your needs to others uh, or, or helping them to develop, right? Do you want things more for yourself or you you're seeking for what others need from you in that moment and trying to adapt to the specific needs of that person. Now you're trying to put yourself in, in their shoes. In all of those relationships, you can, uh, you can see yourself. Uh, you can see how much you're giving and how much you're getting. So it is by the fruit that we judge the tree. And, and that, is, uh, that is something that uh, we... Collectively, I, I believe we don't do enough. Mm. And if, if we all were doing something like that, I think the world would be a much better place. Um, it's also interesting to, to mention that, you know, if you go to the Oregon Spiritual Society website, you see that our subtitle is Awakening Spirituality on Everyday Life. And this is exactly uh, the reason why we, we, we did this. Um, we and me uh, in particular, um, I, I, I noticed that people would see spirituality as something that they do on, uh, on the spare time, right? Mm -hmm. It is detached from work. It is detached from their life, yeah. their relationships. And yeah. they just had that time when they care about spirituality, about their visual boards, about whatever they practice they have. Uh, and then comes real life, as if you were two different things. Yes. But again, what is your spirit, 
true spirituality. I, I so, like this. I, I, I like the idea of what you were saying. It makes so much sense. We live in this duality of I'm going to go to work and then I'm going to go to church later. And there was so we live so separate, such separate lives from our spirituality. That's what you had said. We it's as if we live two separate lives. We have our our right. life when we go to work. We when we're outside, but then when we go to church or we go to our synagogue or our spiritual center. Right. Then that that's the singular time for our spirituality. But after that, we go back home. Then I'm back to being the old me that I wasn't exactly. before. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. <clears throat> and again, if we if we see ourselves from a spiritualist perspective, then uh, you must live your life differently. You must you must see that there's a larger perspective there, and that needs to be the focus of your life. Yes, you ha you're in a physical form now, and yes, you have things to work on. But, uh, but if you're here, then you have a spiritual purpose. Uh, you mm -hmm. have a spiritual purpose on your own development. That's what I call the inner development. But you also have the purpose of transforming the life of those around you, transforming the environment where you are, right? Uh, so uh, I think in one of my articles, I make the point that the, the measure of, of your spiritual development is the impact that you cause in your society. We can think about, um, we can think about any of the, uh, how the, 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 the people that made the biggest impact on, on earth had this impact of transforming things how they are. And actually many times what I see is that um, those they are making, transforming the environment are not necessarily coming from a spiritualist, a traditional spiritualist, or religious traditions, but there are people in real life, you know, in, in, we are all people in real life, but there are people with no, no, uh, uh, you know, not, not, what they are bringing is not with the, the package, in the package of spirituality, right? Right. But you can look at them and, and see how, how that has a spiritual uh, content. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, it is by the fruit that we judge the tree. Yes. And th that's interesting because when we think, when we kind of do a little bit of uh, research into history, people like Clara Barton, um, Florence Nightingale, although they had some sort of religious background, but it wasn't when they were doing all these good deeds and right. uh, trying to help society wasn't based off of a religious, of a desire to spread the religiosity or a, it was just a, a, a desire to help humanity as a whole, right. to unify, to bring basic needs, at least in the case of Florence Nightingale, wanted to bring basic needs so people weren't dying from cholera and diseases and Clara Barton, wanting just to bring about basic things so men and, and women could just live in a society where things were better. It wasn't so rustic, if you will. So it was more, and so I look at spirits like that, people that have come to this earth, and it seems that kind of coincides with what you're talking about, I think a little bit. So. What, Roto, what I'm hearing you say is that we first need to evaluate where we are at right. by evaluating our lives. And sometimes we need to, in order, because some people might say, well, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Okay, well, how are your relationships? This is what I'm getting from what you're saying. Evaluate right. the relationships that you're in. You know, are you right. hearing your, your partner, your spouse, um, those around you, your children, or those who you're living with, your roommate, whatever? Right. What, are you, what, what are the types of feedback, the type of relationships that you have in your life? That's not to say that if you have bad relationships, it means that you're a bad person. It just means we all have work yeah. that needs to be done and we should be open to that. So I like that. And I think that's a great starting point. So for those of you who are watching or listening to this, I think that's a fantastic starting point. It's first finding out where you are at on this scale to, to know where to begin, because I think that's often a question that we get, like, where do I start? How do I begin? And sometimes right. you just have to make that evaluation in your life to say, okay, well, where am I at right now? And what's around me and, and what's my, my purpose? So is there anything else that you also would recommend for people to incorporate in their day-to-day -day lives after they've made this evaluation? Yeah, so the evaluation coming from their relationships also coming from what they want to bring to their lives. And I think, you know, that is a good way to go about it. But just look within 
you know, and uh, find your own ways to to learn about yourself. Uh, and then beyond that, I would maybe talk about um, a couple of feelings. One of them is guilt, right? Uh, if you feel guilt, uh, you need to work on that uh, because that's not going to be good for you uh, from a spiritual perspective, right? And right. Uh, it, it is what I'm what I'm talking about is not that the, the guilt of, you know, I made a mistake. I realized that I asked for forgiveness and we, we move on. Right. I'm talking about what we call uh, uh, remorse. Right. It's that grinding feeling <clears throat> that you have of something that happened 10 years ago, but you're still carrying that in that negative environment. That is incredibly destructive for you uh, from a spiritual perspective and you 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 need to work on that uh, better to work now than later uh, yeah. so if, if you have any of those feelings make sure you you're, you're working on those I guess I w go ahead no go ahead uh, that's, no, there that's one that I want to share no that that's really good I think that's really important especially in our in our lives, because, you know, if you are a believer, which I, I know I, I am, I believe you are too in past lives. And, and even in this life too, we tend to, not tend to, sometimes we experience guilt. And there's a really good book by a Brazilian spiritist medium, uh, Divaldo Franco. And he it was a channeled book. It was a channeled book or psychographed book. And it was by his uh, spirit mentor slash guide, uh, Joanna DeAngelis. It's called Existential Conflicts. And in this particular book, it really primarily just deals with a lot of emotions or rather feelings that really trip us up, such as mm -hmm. guilt and even love, uh, jealousy, things of that nature. And really, she talks about this idea of guilt and how it really can hold us back from moving forward. So I'll, I'll link... Um, the book down below. It's a, an excellent book if you want to just learn about guilt, how to deal with it. And it's not from a, a really a, a religious perspective, although it is a, a, a spiritual book and it is a spiritist book. However, you don't have to have, you do not have to have had any prior knowledge of spiritism because if you just read the book, it's as if it's a psychological textbook about the psychology of guilt. So it's really interesting read to learn about that. And I like that you mentioned that because I think through this self-discovery, when we're trying to work on ourselves, we're going to begin to uncover a lot of emotions, a lot of, we're going to identify a lot of feelings that perhaps we were not in touch with before or things that we're going to have to begin to accept. And that I think that's something really important as well is self-love and not judging ourselves so harshly. Right. Would you agree with that? Absolutely, yeah. And the, maybe the last point I wanted to make is just, uh, you know, not everything will be bad. So look for the good yeah. things too, because, you know, uh, and, and try to focus as you're making change, try to focus on positive things, right? It's, it's a much better thing to focus on being humble than to focus on not being uh, 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 a pride. Uh, pride or prideful, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, think think positive, think positive, and you have time, right? Uh, the guilt comes from not giving yourself time. It's interesting because we, when we um, when we study something, right? Uh, in in your profession, uh, uh, whatever you study, we act, we act, we don't have any expectations that we will get everything right the first time, right? We accept that that would be a, a learning process, there would be mistakes, and then you continue to learn, and you learn with your mistakes, and, and then you, you become knowledgeable. Uh, there is, there's knowledge that comes with theory, study, there's knowledge that comes with practice, right? And, uh, and both are valuable and both are necessary to, yes. to achieve a level of mastery. In our spiritual life, it's no, no different, right? But we behave very differently with the mistakes that we make. Uh, we, there's a theory. That's when, when you go to the spiritual center or when you go uh, to whatever practice or whatever you read, 
uh, you're gathering content, and that should should feed your your intellect, right? And and inspire thoughts. Uh, and then there's life where you practice, uh, and you're going to make mistakes. You're going to make conceptual mistakes and practical mistakes. And you're not supposed to be yes, feel guilt. You know, the guilt is basically just telling you up. Yep, is you're recognizing that you missed the mark. But then, yeah. you know, accept that you're in this learning curve. You're learning, and you're 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 going to learn. Um, so, learn, move on, and don't don't have this feeling, this grinding feeling, as if you were supposed to be perfect from from the beginning, because it's it's basically rational. But we ended up with a culture where that that is part of our psych, psychology. Yeah. Uh, so very important for us to try to see things from a different perspective. Absolutely. Roto, I loved it. I think a lot of food for thought, and I, I hope that people can stop this video, rewatch it, and take some notes and rewatch it again. And hopefully, with some of the links that we're going to link down in the description box, people can read a little bit more, enrich their minds, maybe be comforted, and come back and leave us a comment or share this video. But Hadulfo, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to bring you back on our channel, on this channel, to talk to us about different topics, similar topics, but I hope that um, anyone who's either listening to the audio version of this video or actually just watching this video has gained something from it. As always, it is our ardent desire to spread love, positivity, and enlightenment to all of those around us, and of course, through our social media. So thank you so much for watching. And Roto, thank you so much for joining us all the way from Oregon State. We thank you and God bless you so much. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. I hope, all right. uh, I hope we have some positive thoughts and interesting ideas here to share. Absolutely. All right. Thank you guys and thank you everyone for watching. Bye-bye.